Ali, we recently had on one of your toughest critics, David Simon, right, who created The Wire. I know you were on a, a sell a train ride with him one day. And yeah, I've known David beer. a long time. Yeah. Um, we had a symbiotic relationship. <laughs> he was a police reporter, and I was the leading city council critic. Right. And, um, of course, after doing policies. The Baltimore Sun, uh, he did this remarkable series called The Wire. And we asked him about your candidacy and what he thought about your policies in Baltimore. It was almost as if he couldn't get the reductions in the murder rate that he had promised as a candidate. And the next three or four years were, let's just throw everybody in the back of a van. And if you think I'm exaggerating, all you have to do is read the, the ACLU suit that they, the city eventually settled, because it didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter if you were uh, somebody sitting on your own stoop or a school teacher or somebody coming home from work. If you looked at a cop the wrong way in Baltimore in, in about those three central years when Marty was trying to become governor, you went in the back of a police van, you were taken out of the city jail, you know, held overnight. That was David Simon of The Wire, in your response, Governor yeah. O'Malley. David Simon's a very creative guy, uh, and many of the things that he was saying are actually not true. And the strongest evidence in our short time together that I can cite for it is this. If the things that David says were actually true, I would not have been reelected with 88 percent of the vote in a majority African-American city, nor would I have received the overwhelming support I received when I ran for governor from the poorest parts of our city, who were relieved, frankly, at having what had been a 20-year uh, continued occupation by drug dealers 24-7 in their neighborhoods. I have been on a constant search in treating this wound that we share as Americans, where the issues of violent crime, uh, gun violence, race, and law enforcement are all painfully tied together. And over the course of those 15 years, I have learned what has worked and I have learned what has not. And the things that have not, we have stopped doing. I repealed the death penalty, restored voting rights to 52,000 people, uh, re, uh, decriminalized the possession of small amounts of marijuana, drove our incarceration rate down to a 20-year low. And during my time as mayor, I actually improved police and community relations, and we recorded what remained three of the four lowest years for use of lethal force by Baltimore City police officers. And the fact of the matter is, even with the heartbreaking setback of a few months ago after Freddie Gray's, after the protests, after Freddie Gray's custodial death, the fact of the matter is, in the prior year before that, arrest levels in Baltimore were down to, uh, I think, a 25 or 30 year low. And uh, uh, the arrest levels actually peaked some 12 years ago. So David's, uh, David's a creative guy, though, and he's made a lot of money being very creative about the story of Baltimore. Well, I want to ask you, uh, speaking of Freddie Gray, that uh, the Baltimore $6.4 million settlement with the family of Freddie Gray, the African-American man who died in April after being arrested and transported without a seatbelt in a police van. His family said his spine was 80 percent severed at the neck. Mm. Police said they arrested him for making eye contact with them, then running away. Six Baltimore police officers are currently facing criminal prosecution over his death. As former mayor of Baltimore, what are your thoughts on the settlement and the case? Yeah, I have not—I um, had—I had not read—I did not have all of the facts that the city solicitor would have had in settling that case. I don't think it's really in my place to, to, uh, to talk about the, you know, the merits of the settlement. I mean, obviously, the city thought it was—it it merited that, that settlement. And uh, I can say this, though, that— uh, Policing is, is one of the most difficult uh, and uh, dangerous professions in our country. And it is important when we have incidents, uh, when we have incidents that, that result in the loss of life, that we are forthright and that we address it very, very directly and that justice is done. Uh, that's what I, I learned to do as, as mayor. We used to do 100 reverse integrity stings a year in order to safeguard the integrity of our force. We constantly strive to improve training. Our goal should be that uh, uh, for all of the tragedies that we are now seeing on our video cell phone technology, there are things that actually work 
that can move our departments to become more open and transparent, among them body cameras, requiring all departments to report their excessive force, discourtesy, lethal use of force, custodial deaths, so we can see whether we're doing better this year than we were last year. Governor and that's O'Malley, what I've laid out. Did you agree with the indictment of the six police officers? Yeah, that was our state's attorney's call. Uh, and that's why we elect a state's attorney. So given the pendency of it, uh, I will uh, I will leave that matter to the courts and to the good people of the jury to resolve it. Uh, but that was the state's attorney's call, and I'm sure she did what she believed was was best in the discharge of her duties. Mm.